Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Rock. And now, Pastor Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. We're so glad that you tuned in again to study the Word of God with us. As you know, this year, 2014, we are studying through the Bible, uh, giving brief synopsis and studying different characters from Genesis to Revelation. We're on target to be in the book of Revelation uh, in the month of December. I know that if you stay with us, your general Bible knowledge will be tremendously increased. And the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if our faith increases, then we're more apt to live the life than God wants us to live. And Jesus said, I come so you can have life and have it more abundantly. So when our faith increases, we're able to have the life Jesus wanted us to have. So now we have studied in the book of Second Samuel, dealing with David becoming king. One of the most important things that we've learned here is that even though he was anointed years before he became king, it wasn't his season yet, it wasn't his time. Anointing deals with a place and a particular time. The time was at the death of Saul, and a particular place was Israel. It was an anointed king of Babylon or Egypt, but this place. So, brothers and sisters, even though there's an anointing there, there's a season. There's a time to wait. It wasn't David's time. He had, the oil had been poured on him. He had been anointed by the prophet Samuel, but he waited. And what did he do when he was waiting? He served King Saul. He served King Saul. Even though he had been anointed to be king, and when you look at it, we're probably more qualified being king than Saul. But because of protocol, because of order and structure in the kingdom, it wasn't time yet. I wonder how many of us can God trust with the foreknowledge of our anointing? That's why, that's why the revealing of a person anointing is something we have to be very careful with because we can reveal that to them too early and it will destroy them. But David waited and at the proper time, the right season, at the age of 30, he becomes king. So now he's king. He tries to bring the Ark of the Covenant home. That was disastrous. Uh, Uzzah lost his life. Somebody lost a father. Somebody lost a husband because they did not follow the law of God. And that's amazing. Even though David was David, giant killer, mighty David, faithful David, musician David, super talented David, he violated the word of God. When I say he violated as a leader, he was to make sure that the Ark of the Covenant was, was, was carried by the priests on their shoulders, not on the Ark. And some of us would say that is so uh, uncalled for. And, and David got angry with God. David was upset with God because Uzzah died. But brothers and sisters, the one thing that, one thing that we must understand about God and that is that God is very, very meticulous. And you get that when you study the Old Testament. So when we get in the New Testament, we need to understand this is the very divine character of God. And we get confused with grace. And we think because God has given us grace, that means that he doesn't really want us to obey. That is not the case. That is not the case at all. So David David did it the right way. The Ark of the Covenant comes into uh, Jerusalem, of course, you know, he began to dance and shout and spin and play before God. And, uh, of course, uh, Michael, his wife, had a problem with that. And because she had a problem with that, the Bible says that she did not have children from that day. So so this is a thing that happened to her. Now, now, into David's life, David becomes blessed. He He becomes an awesome, awesome king. He was a man after God's own heart. We know that. He began to conquer many nations. He wanted to build God's a God a house. God didn't permit him to do that. He was going to let Solomon do that. And then at the height of David's popularity, at the height 
of David being a great man. Something happens in Second Samuel chapter 11. David commits adultery with Bathsheba and have Uriah, Uriah, her husband, killed. I want you to just hear that. Now, what happens to David will happen to us if we don't understand who our greatest enemy is. The greatest enemy that we will ever face will not be some giant, will not be something from the outside. It will be something from the inside. David is a mighty man of valor. He is a mighty warrior. He had defeated Goliath. He had killed a lion. He had killed a bear. But when he went on that rooftop and he looked over there and saw Bathsheba naked, he couldn't use a slingshot on himself. See, the greatest enemy we will ever face is ourselves. The only, only person that can take us to hell is the person we look at in the mirror every day. The only person that can cause us to fail or not supersede in life is the person that we live with. That's ourselves and nobody else. We blame people. But the bottom line, because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have no excuses. The best Satan, we, 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 we talk about the devil and we know we wrestle against, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and spiritual weakness in high places. We, we know that. And because of that, because of that, we sometimes think the devil made us do something. He can't do that. If the devil could make us sin, we all would be sinners. He can't do that. The best Satan could do when tempting Jesus was to try to tempt him to jump, was to say to him, if you be the son of God, jump, because it's not in his power to destroy us. The Bible says, and we just talked about this, Easter just passed, the Bible, talked, the Bible declares unto us that Christ destroyed the power of Satan on the cross. And he says to us that no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. And none of the weapons of the enemy will hurt us. So we know we have power to tread on scorpions and, and serpents and, and all of that. So we have that. So Satan cannot defeat us. He cannot destroy us. He tempts us to destroy ourselves. So here's David, very critical scene. He walks out on his balcony, and there's, the, there's Bathsheba. Now, Bathsheba is completely different from Delilah, and we, you, you must understand this. We have some Delilah temptations, but there are Bathsheba temptations. They're totally different, absolutely different. Bathsheba is righteous. Bathsheba is a woman of God. David is a man of God. There is another force operating that night in the atmosphere, the power and the prince of the air. There's another force here that tempts David. Now just, just think about it because we need to talk about this. The difference between a Delilah temptation and a Bathsheba temptation. A Delilah temptation, it was from the beginning. Delilah knew what she was doing. She was, she was being paid to trap Samson. She was being paid to find out his strength so he could be subdued. She was an enemy. Are you listening to me? She was an enemy to Israel, an enemy to Samson. She did not love him. She went there to deceive him. That's the Delilah temptation. Bathsheba is a woman of God. She is not trying to deceive David. I don't care what you've seen on television or what's been insinuated. This was not coordinated. This was, if you look at it, it looks like it is a coincidence. And that's what we need to understand, brothers and sisters, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We need to understand that some things are a setup to get us to destroy our lives, to slow us down, to bring shame in our lives. So when David walked out on the balcony, 
when you read the story, he was restless. This was not planned. When he walked out on the balcony, this is when he saw Bathsheba. Now, the problem is this. The problem is very deep. And the problem is this. He wasn't supposed to be there. He was supposed to be with his men. He was supposed to have been in another place. What happened to David was that he got bored. He was restless. He got bored. Boredom. Boredom. Boredom is not sin, but it would definitely lead to sin. What Satan does, he breaks this great man down, got him out of place. He was supposed to be in another place. He in the wrong place. Here comes the spirit of boredom. He is restless because he wasn't supposed to be there sleeping. He gets up in his boredom. He walks out, and there it is. He saw Bathsheba. Bathsheba is there. Not a Delilah. See, temptations that come from Delilah, we, 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 we know what's happening there. We should be looking for that. Samson knew what Delilah was doing. He was playing with her. That's why he kept telling her lies about where his strength was. It wasn't that he trusted Delilah. He just played too long with her. He, he manipulated her too long. He played with the enemy. But Bathsheba was totally different. She is... She is Innocently bathing. David walks out because of his restlessness and he sees Bathsheba. At that point, he has to deal with his greatest enemy of all. Not Goliath. Not the lion or the bear that tried to kill a lamb. David has to deal with David. We talked about last week. The greatest, the greatest battle Jesus Christ had was the battle, battle in Gethsemane, not with Satan. That was not a battle. The greatest battle Jesus had was in Gethsemane, when Jesus had to verse, Jesus had to go against Jesus, Jesus versus Jesus, and that's when Jesus prayed through. That's when Jesus said, "Not my will, but Thy will be done." Remember the prayer. He asked God if it be possible. It wasn't possible. But the flesh, and since he was he was all man, all man, and he was tempted in all points like we we are, that wrestled that. Jesus overcame. David didn't overcome. This enemy caused David to really bring a incredible snare into his life. For mobile giving. Text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. We want to welcome everyone back to Axe Ministries. We will be re-entering our sanctuary at both locations, both in Conway and in North Little Rock. In Conway, our service will begin at 12 noon. We want you to know that the doors will open 30 minutes before each service, but we're asking you to be there prior to then so that you can go through the drive through with the health professionals so that they can take everyone's temperature in the car to clear you to come into the building for service. We want you to know that Acts Ministries, above all, first and foremost, we want your safety and health to be our utmost and top priority. So we're taking precautionary measures to make sure that we do everything within our power to make sure you are safe. So we want you to know that coming back to Acts Ministries, coming back to the house of God will be a safe and not only safe, but a friendly environment for everyone. So when you come back to the house of God, please don't forget your mask. You can smile behind the mask and wave and say hello. We have a a no 4-H-K-T in process. What is a 4-H-K? 
HKT. What is a no for HKT? That means no hugs, no high fives, no hand holding and no handshakes, no kisses and no touching. So we want to social distance ourselves six feet apart from as many people as possible. We have put decals on the phone on the floor to help you to social distance from other people. We have signage up to help you to remind you about your mask and to remind you about social distancing. We have proper protocol for hand washing placed in the restrooms along with some other measures that we've taken. And so if you have questions, comments, or concerns, you can always send those to wtebroadcast at gmail.com. And we are keeping many on the prayer list. Those of you who have pre-existing conditions, those of you who, who may not meet the criteria and you've taken the Acts Reentry Attendance Self uh, Assessment form, you've taken that and you realize that you can't come back, but you've already signed up to come back, please call the office and let them know that you have signed up, but you won't be able to come so that they can feel your seat since you will no longer be able to come. So we want you to know, um, even though if you're not able to come back in our phase one, you will probably be able to come back in phase two. So don't lose heart. We are live streaming. You will be able to see everything on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Axe TV. Just know that we will still be streaming. We'll still be reaching out to the masses, to the multitudes. And until that time, we look forward to seeing you back in the house of God. Welcome back, Axe.